Mr. Vice President, distinguished guests, and above all, our very cherished Holocaust survivors. 38 years ago yesterday, America's first national commemoration of the Holocaust took place in this very rotunda. On April 24th, 1979, the idea to build a United States Holocaust Memorial Museum was just that, an idea. At the time, there was a presidential commission to study how our nation should remember the Holocaust. The commission, which eventually recommended the creation of an educational museum and this commemoration, was chaired by Elie Wiesel. He spoke at every single annual commemoration in the early years, and most recently in 2009. And now Ellie is gone. As a tribute to his singular leadership and to all the survivors, I would like to share with you selections from his remarks of 38 years ago. Friends, what does one do with such memories of fire, with so many fragments of despair? How does one live in a world which witnessed the murder of one million children? Those of us who were there are haunted by those whose lives were turned into ashes, by those whose cemetery was the sky. I belong to a traumatized generation, Jewish victims stripped of their identity and disowned by the whole world. Every occupied nation, every underground movement received help from London, Washington, or Moscow. Not the Jews. They were the loneliest victims. The world knew and kept silent. And yet, and yet, when the nightmare lifted, there was no hate in the hearts of those who survived, only sadness and paradoxically, hope. For some reason, they were convinced that out of grief and so much suffering, a powerful message of compassion and justice would be heard and received. They were convinced that after Auschwitz, people would no longer yield to fanaticism, nations would no longer wage war, and racism anti-Semitism and class humiliation would be shamed forever. The survivors advocated hope, not despair. Their testimony contains neither rancor nor bitterness. They knew too well that hate is self-debasing and vengeance self-defeating. Instead of choosing nihilism and anarchy, they chose to opt for man. Instead of setting cities on fire, they enriched them. Many went on to build an ancient dream of Israel. They chose to remain human and to fight for human rights. For we have learned certain lessons. We have learned not to be neutral in times of crisis, for neutrality always helps the aggressor, never the victims. We have learned that silence is not the answer. We have learned that the opposite of love is not hatred, but indifference. What is memory if not a response to and against indifference? So let us remember for their sake and ours, let us remember the heroes of Warsaw, the martyrs of Treblinka, the children of Auschwitz. They fought alone, they suffered alone, they lived alone, but they did not die alone, for something in all of us died with them. Today, we pledge to Elie Wiesel, to all the survivors and the victims, we shall always remember, for your sake, and for ours.